Hey folks, uh, today we're going to have a look at Medmary Coastal Realignment Scheme. That's quite a title, so I'm just going to pop it up the top. Now, um, it used to be called, for anyone who uh, is familiar with this, it used to be called Managed Retreat, but they actually stopped calling it that because it was too emotive for, uh, well, everyone really, because it gives the idea that you are just giving land away, which essentially they are. Um, but realignment just sounds a bit more positive. Now, this is a case study from 2014. It's actually started in 2011, but it's it was finished in 2014. And it's near Chichester. It's actually really close to where um, I'm currently uh, teaching. So, yeah, it's nice and local. Now, it's not complicated at all. What they did was they took a coastline, and I'm going to really roughly sketch this for you. It's by no means accurate, but if you imagine this is the sea, okay, and this is the land. Okay, I'm not going to draw the land because I've got lots of things that are going to go on this. Um, and what they did was they were having really big problems with the sea, basically flooding and, and breaching. It used to have kind of seawall and rocks and things all the way along the edge and then there was a breach. Uh, so what happened was around here, so again if you're making a copy of this at home, just it's roughly this kind of shape, it's not perfect but it's, it's about that. There was a um, 110 metre breach which is basically where the sea just came in. Okay, it broke through the defences that were already there. And they didn't mind, the Environment Agency and the people, the contractors, because what it did was it created this intertidal zone. Now, all that means is the tide goes in and the tide goes out again. It's not the sea. This didn't suddenly become ocean. It just is an area. I'm just going to draw some... This is salt marsh, Okay. It's, it's an area that, yes, at high tide it, it can be covered in water, but it's not very deep. And when the tide's out, it creates this wonderful salt marsh with grasses and, and this really special habitat. It's actually 183 acres of it. So it looks small, looks like a little puddle, but I promise you it's massive. And it's actually now known as an RSPB, RS. Oh, got to fit that in. PB uh, Nature Reserve. So it's a very special place for nature, for birds and things. Let's just draw a little bird, a little beady eye. There we go. So it's a really special environment that's been created. Now it never used to be this. It used to be farmland. There were some houses. Obviously, all of that has gone. Okay. What we've got over here is a shingle beach. And there is a shingle beach either side. So over here is shingle beach as well. And what they've done is they've also put some rocks. And we can draw those rocks behind the beach to kind of protect. Um, particularly protect the, well, the, the housing and things behind it. But just to strengthen really that area. Because they don't want the breach to go any further. They're happy with where it is. They don't want it to continue. So, so shingle beach and rocks. Okay. Put that on both sides. Now, if you're not familiar with the area, if you go this way, you get to Selsey. Selsey Bill. It's quite a famous place. Um, really nice coastal town. Um, in this kind of zone, we've got a place called West Sands caravan park. Not very high value in terms of caravan park. Not very high value in terms of, you know, the economy and things. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's money spent there, there's value in the caravans, but it's not the same as, as over in this corner. If you go that way, you get to West Witterings, which is, you know, your million pound or more houses. So, um, yeah, they had to find a solution that would protect the environment without costing a fortune. So they managed to keep this caravan park. I'm just going to pop a few more caravans in there. 
residents are happy and it's created this wonderful place. Now I've been there myself, you can walk all the way around it. So what I'm drawing on now is the footpath. So if you want to just dot that along. So you can get around, actually it's not, it's even good, I've been there on bikes basically and cycled around it. It's super flat, there's no hills at all and it's really easy. There's not like lots of gates or anything like that. It's super, super chilled. It took hardly any time, I don't know, half an hour or something to cycle around it. it wasn't wasn't a long one. And um, you know, there's a lot of footpaths and, and cycle paths. In total, there are 10 kilometers, which is, you know, 10 k's of fairway. I ran that the other day. It wasn't, didn't feel short. Uh, 10 kilometers of footpaths. Um, so for people for walking, yeah, and then seven kilometres of bike paths, and these are dedicated bike paths, so the, the walkers and the cyclists shouldn't um, get mixed up with each other, no accidents, and then there's five kilometres of bridleways, and now bridleways mean that you can take your horse uh, or pony for a ride, which is pretty cool, and now all that's new, it's new, they're new, it's there for the local people, it's there for people to visit. Um, all because of this new zone that's been created. Now, what else is going on there? We've got uh, an embankment. Now, I won't draw it all around because it'll just take ages. But basically, um, draw an arrow to that. There are seven kilometres of clay, so local clay, uh, used to make an embankment which is basically a big um, like an earth bund it's a large like a mound basically because uh, what you don't want is all this water to flood into local farmlands so basically all the way around this area this footpath that I, I drew earlier um, is an embankment it's the kind of thing you see on the sides of rivers yeah, like like a levee. So seven kilometres of embankments using local clay. And that's important. So there was a smaller sort of carbon footprint in the production of this. Okay. Um, also, let's have an arrow to that salt marsh vegetation. And let's have a go. Let's have a go at drawing a cow. Now... The cows roam fairly free in this area. They can go into local farmland. They can also go into this intertidal zone. I am terrible at drawing a cow. Let's just give it some ears and a body, a couple of legs, and they sort of have a tail, don't they? There we go. Black and white helps, doesn't it? Okay, there's our cow. What we need to write is vegetation supports cattle farming. Now, it's not what you would expect as the best place to farm cattle, but they actually call this salt marsh beef because it's salty. You know, the, the actual um, marsh itself, the grasses are salty. They now call it salt marsh beef and they charge more money for it. So they can sell that beef and make money for the local economy. So vegetation supports cattle farming, in brackets, salt marsh beef, okay? And lots of local pubs buy into that. Pubs and restaurants. Right, outside of this intertidal zone, okay, are, are farm buildings. Now I'm not going to go mad with this, just pop some buildings in there. Right, farm buildings. Okay, and also you've got farmland as well. So it's not that it goes straight onto housing. There will be some farmhouses and things, but uh, generally speaking, it's it's not super high value land that surrounds this intertidal zone. Now, thanks to this decision to allow the sea in and to breach this area of previous farmland, Selsey Bill, Remember, there's lots of people live in Selsey. There's lots of houses. It now has a one in a thousand chance of flooding, which is incredible. It used to be one 
in one, I think, or one in two. It was almost that it would flood every year. And now it has a one in 1,000 chance of flooding. And the reason for that is when there's a storm and the sea is heightened, it can use this to take the pressure off. It can flood into here. This area is like a sponge. It absorbs all that water, might even stretch slightly over the embankments, but only into farmland and Selsey is protected. Now you're gonna to want to know some more facts about this. So these rocks, let's start with those. Uh, where should we go? Over here. These rocks came from Norway. They were um, imported basically on a big ship and then they used diggers to kind of bring them onto the beach. And they were, there were actually 60,000 rocks in total. All right, so that's a lot of ships bringing rocks in. Um, what else? I can tell you, should we go through some negatives? It's all been sounding very positive so far, hasn't it? And we know with any of these schemes, you do need to be able to weigh up the pros and cons. So, um, oh no, one good thing first. Let's do, it has generated, so this is economic now, positive. It has generated lots of income in what we call green tourism. Now, if you're not sure and you haven't heard that term before, it's basically jobs that are linked to green spaces. So now there are coffee shops, there are ice cream vendors, there are local businesses and pubs and accommodation that are benefiting from bird watchers and people who want to visit the coast. They're not coming, they're not going to Disneyland, they're not off to a, a theme park. This is green tourism, where they're coming to visit an environment where they might get to see a different species of bird, for example. Okay, um, so they've generated lots of income in green tourism and also jobs. All right. However, on the negative side, it cost basically government, DEFRA, uh, the Environment Agency through, through taxes, it cost 28 million pounds. And you might think, well, how? How can it cost 28 million? All they've done is let the sea flood. Well, they haven't. Remember all those footpaths, excuse me, bridleways, bike paths, all the rocks that they had to import from Norway, probably countless you know, costs on machinery and things they've had to hire in. Uh, so there was a big financial cost. Also, there was the loss of not one or two, but three farms. So three whole farms that were in this area, gone. Okay, and they used to grow wheat, okay, which is used for making bread and pasta and cereal and things. Um, they were relocated, they were bought out, basically they had to go. Um, and then even though it's created this amazing habitat, you know, this kind of great watery intertidal salt marsh, you know, great environment, adding some more. Um, it also caused habitat disturbance because this was a farm. There were hedgerows, there were birds, there were insects and rodents and hedgehogs and all sorts of things that now will not live in this environment. So there was some habitat disturbance. Okay, so it's not all good. I'm just going to put that over like this. It's not all good, it's not all bad either, and I think we all have to be aware this is very, very possibly the route that we're gonna be going more and more in the future because the way things are going with climate change and sea level rise, it's just not gonna be feasible to keep building bigger walls, okay? So there you go. Medmary Coastal Realignment Scheme for it's part of your uh, paper one and uh, coast section.